Yashar, Jasher 31. And in the seven, seventh year, Yaakov's service, which he served Lavan, was completed. And Yaakov said unto Lavan, Give me my woman, for the days of my service are fulfilled. And Lavan did so, and Lavan and Yaakov assembled all the people of that place, and they made a feast. And in the evening, Lavan came to the house, and afterward Yaakov came there with the people of the feast. And Lavan extinguished all the lights that were there in the house. And Yaakov said unto Lavan, Wherefore do you do this thing unto us? And Lavan answered, Such is our custom to act in this land. And afterward Lavan took his daughter Leah, and he brought her to Yaakov. And he came to her, and Yaakov did not know that she was Leah. And Lavan gave his daughter Leah his maid Zilpah for a handmaid. And all the people at the feast knew what Lavan had done to Yaakov, but they did not tell the thing to Yaakov. And all the neighbors came that night to Yaakov's house, and they ate and drank and rejoiced and played before Leah upon timbrels and with dances, and they responded before Yaakov, Hilea, Hilea. And Yaakov heard their words, but did not understand their meaning. But he thought such might be their custom in this land. And the neighbors spoke these words before Yaakov during the night. And all the lights that were in the house, Lavan had that night extinguished. And in the morning, when daylight appeared, Yaakov turned to his woman and he saw... And behold, it was Leah that had been lying in his bosom. And Yaakov said, Behold, now I know what the neighbors said last night. He, Leah, they said, and I knew it not. And Yaakov called unto Lavan and said unto him, What is this that you did unto me? Surely I served you for Rachel. And why did you deceive me? And did give me Leah. And Lavan answered Yaakov, saying, Not so is it done in our place to give the younger before the elder. Now, therefore, if you desire to take her sister likewise, take her unto you for the service which you will serve me for another seven years. And Yaakov did so, and he also took Rachel for a woman. And he served Lavan seven years more. And Yaakov also came to Rachel, and he loved Rachel more than Leah. And Lavan gave her his handmaid, Bilha, for a handmaid. And when Yahuwah saw that Leah was hated, Yahuwah opened her womb. And she conceived and bore Yaakov four sons in those days. And these are their names. Reuven, Shimon, Levi, and Yahuda, and she afterward left bearing. And at that time, Rachel was barren, and when she had, rather, and she had no offspring. And Rachel envied her sister Leah, and when Rachel saw that she bore no children to Yaakov, she took her handmaid Bilha. And she bore Yaakov two sons, Dan and Naphtali. And when Leah saw that she had left bearing, she also took her handmaid Zilpah, and she gave her to Yaakov for a woman. And Yaakov also came to Zilpah, and she also bore Yaakov two sons, Gad and Asher. Rather, God and Asher. And Leah 
again conceived and bore Yaakov in those days two sons and one daughter. And these are their names, Yishachkar, Zevelin, and their sister, Dina. And Rachel was still barren in those days. And Rachel prayed unto Yahuwah at that time. And she said, O Yahuwah, Elohim, remember me and visit me, I beseech you. For now my man will cast me off, for I have borne him no children. Now Yahuwah, Elohim, hear, hear my supplication before you and see my affliction. And give me children like one of the handmaids, that I may no more bear my reproach. And Elohim heard her, and opened her womb, and Rachel conceived and bore a son. And she said, Yahuwah has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Yosef, saying, May Yahuwah add to me another son. And Yaakov was 91 years old when she bore him. At that time, Yaakov's mother, Rivcha, sent her nurse, Deborah, the daughter of Utz, and two of Yitzchak's servants unto Yaakov. And they came to Yaakov, to Haran, and they said unto him, Rivcha has sent us to you, that you shall return to your father's house, to the land of Canaan. And Yaakov hearkened unto them in this which his mother had spoken. At that time, the other seven years which Yaakov served Lavan for Rachel were completed. And it was at the end of fourteen years that he had dwelt in Haran that Yaakov said unto Lavan, Give me my women and send me away that I may go to my land. For behold, my mother did descend unto me from the land at Canaan, that I should return to my father's house. And Laban said unto him, Not so, I pray you. If I have found favor in your sight, do not leave me. Appoint me your wages, and I will give them, and remain with me. And Yaakov said unto him, this is what you shall give me for wages, that I shall this day pass through all your flock and take away from them every lamb that is speckled and spotted, and such as are brown amongst the sheep and amongst the goats. And if you will do this thing for me, I will return and feed your flock and keep them as at first. And Levan did so, and Levan removed from his flock all that Yaakov had said and gave them to him. And Yaakov placed all that he had removed from Levan's flock in the hands of his sons, and Yaakov was feeding the remainder of Levan's flock. And when the servants of Yitzchak which he had sent unto Yaakov, saw that Yaakov would not then return with them to the land of Canaan to his father. They then went away from him, and they returned home to the land of Canaan. And Deborah, rather, and Deborah remained with Yaakov in Haran. And she did not return with the servants of Yitzchak to the land of Canaan. And Deborah, resided with Yaakov's women and children in Haran. And Yaakov served Lavan six years longer. And when the sheep brought forth, Yaakov removed from them such as were speckled and spotted, as he had determined with Lavan. And Yaakov did so at Lavan's for six years. And the man increased abundantly, and he had cattle and maid servants and men servants, camels and asses. And Yaakov had two hundred drove of cattle, and his cattle were of large size, 
and of beautiful appearance and were very productive. And all the families of the sons of men desired to get some of the cattle of Yaakov, for they were exceedingly prosperous. And many of the sons of men came to procure some of Yaakov's flock. And Yaakov gave them a sheep for a manservant, or a maidservant, or for an ass, or a camel, or whatsoever Yaakov desired from them, they gave him. And Yaakov obtained riches and honor and possessions by means of these transactions with the sons of men. And the children of Lavan envied him of this honor. And in the course of time, he heard the words of Lavan's sons, saying, Yaakov has taken away all that was our father's. And of that which was our father's has he acquired all this glory. And Yaakov beheld the countenance of Laban and of his children. And behold, it was not toward him in those days as it had been before. And Yahuwah appeared to Yaakov at the expiration of the six years. And he said unto him, Arise, go forth out of this land and return to the land of your birthplace, and I will be with you. And Yaakov rose up at that time, and he mounted his children and women, and all belonging to him upon camels. And he went forth to go to the land of Canaan, to his father, Yitzchach. And Lavan did not know that Yaakov had gone from him, for Lavan had been that day sheep shearing and Rachel stole her father's images and she took them and concealed them upon the camel upon which she sat and she went on and this is the manner of the images in taking a man who is the firstborn and slaying him and taking the hair off his head and taking salt and salting the head and anointing it in oil. Then taking a small tablet of copper or a tablet of gold and writing the name upon it and placing the tablet under his tongue and taking the head with the tablet under the tongue and putting it in the house and lighting up lights before it, and blowing down to it. And at the time when they bow down to it, it speaks to them in all matters that they ask of it, through the power of the name which is written in it. And some make them in the figures of men, of gold and silver, and go to them in times known to them. And the figures receive the influence of the stars and tell them future things. And in this manner were the images which Rachel stole from her father. And Rachel stole these images which were her father's in order that Lavan might not know through them where Yaakov had gone. And Lavan came home and he asked concerning Yaakov and his household, and he was not to be found. And Lavan sought his images to know where Yaakov had gone and could not find them. And he went to some other images and he inquired of them, and they told him that Yaakov had fled from him to his father's house, to the land of Canaan. And Lavan then rose up, and he took his brothers and all his servants, and he went forth and pursued Yaakov, and he overtook him in Mount Gilad. And Lavan said unto Yaakov, What is this you have done to me, to flee and deceive me, and lead my daughters and their children as captives taken by the sword? And you did not suffer me to kiss them and send them away with joy. And you did steal my Elohim and did go away. 
And Yaakov answered Lavan, saying, Because I was afraid, lest you would take your daughters by force from me. And now, with whomsoever you find your Elohim, he shall die. And Lavan searched for the images, and he examined in all Yaakov's tents and furniture, but could not find them. And Lavan said unto Yaakov, We will cut a covenant together, and it shall be a testimony between me and you. And if you shall afflict my daughters, or shall take other women besides my daughters, even Elohim shall be a witness between me and you in this matter. And they took stones and made a heap. And Lavan said, This heap is a witness between me and you. Therefore he called the name thereof Gilad. And Yaakov and Lavan offered sacrifice upon the mount, and they ate there by the heap, and they tarried in the mount all night. And Lavan rose up early in the morning, and he wept with his daughters, and he kissed them, and he returned unto his place. And he hastened and sent off his son Beor, who was seventeen years old, with Avikorofah, rather with Avikorof, the son of Uts, the son of Nehor, and with them were ten men. And they hastened and went and passed on the road before Yaakov, and they came by another road to the land of Seir. And they came unto Esau and said unto him, Thus says your brother and relative, Your mother's brother Lavan, the son of Beetuel, saying, Have you heard what Yaakov, your brother, has done unto me, who first came to me naked and bare, and I went to meet him and brought him to my house with honor, and I made him great, and I gave him my two daughters for women and also my rather two of my maids. And Elohim blessed him on my account, and he increased abundantly, and had sons, daughters, and maidservants. He is also an immense stock of flocks and herds, camels and asses, also silver and gold in abundance. And when he saw that his wealth increased, he left me while I went to shear my sheep. And he rose up, and fled in secrecy. And he lifted his women and children upon camels, and he led away all his cattle and property, which he acquired in my land. And he lifted up his countenance to go to his father, Yitzchak, to the land of Canaan. And he did not suffer me to kiss my daughters and their children, and he led my daughters as captives, taken by the sword, and he also stole my Elohim, and he fled. And now I have left him in the mountain of the brook of Yebach, him and all belonging to him. He lacks nothing. If it be your wish to go to him, go then, and there will you find him, and you can do unto him as your soul desires, and Lavan's messengers came and told Esau all these things. And Esau heard all the words of Lavan's messengers, and his anger was greatly kindled against Yaakov, and he remembered his hatred, and his anger burned within him. And Esau hastened and took his children and servants and the souls of his household, being sixty men, and he went and assembled all the children of Seir, the Khori, and their people, being three hundred and forty men, and took all this number of four hundred men with drawn swords, and he went unto Yaakov to smite him. And Esau divided this number into several parts, and he took the sixty men of his children and servants and the souls of his household as one head, and gave them in care of Eliphaz, his eldest son. And the remaining heads he gave to the care of the six sons of Seir, the Chari, 
And he placed every man over his generations and children. And the whole of this camp went as it was. And Esau was amongst them toward Yaakov. And he conducted them with speed. And Lavan's messengers departed from Esau and went to the land of Canaan. And they came to the house of Rivka, the mother of, ya mother of Yaakov and Esau. And they told her, saying, Behold, your son Esau has gone against his brother Yaakov with four hundred men. For he heard that he was coming, and he is gone to make war with him, and to smite him, and to take all that he has. And Rivka hastened and sent seventy-two men from the servants of Yitzchak to meet Yaakov on the road. For she said, Perchance Esau may make war in the road when he meets him. And these messengers went on the road to meet Yaakov, and they met him in the road of the brook, on the opposite side of the brook, Yebach. And Yaakov said when he saw them, This camp is destined to me from Elohim. And Yaakov called the name of that place Machnaim. And Yaakov knew all his father's people, and he kissed them and embraced them and came with them. And Yaakov asked them concerning his father and mother, and they said they were well. And these messengers said unto Yaakov, Rivcha, your mother, has sent us to you, saying, I have heard, my son, that your brother Esau has gone forth against you, on the road with men from the children of Seir, the Khori. And therefore, my son, hearken to my voice, and see with your counsel what you will do. And when he comes up to you, supplicate him, and do not speak rashly to him, and give him a present from what you possess, and from what Elohim has favored you with. And when he asks you concerning your affairs, Conceal nothing from him. Perhaps he may turn from his anger against you, and you will thereby save your soul, you and all belonging to you. For it is your duty to honor him, for he is your elder brother. And when Yaakov heard the words of his mother, which the messengers had spoken to him, Yaakov lifted up his voice and wept bitterly and did as his mother then commanded him.